Rachel Madel from Talking With Tech. And I'm Chris Bouguet from Talking With Tech. We have a podcast dedicated to augmentative and alternative communication, all things related to helping kids with complex communication needs. If you have a passion for helping people with language disabilities, this is the show for you. Each episode features an interview or a roundtable discussion on a topic related to augmentative communication and helping people with language disabilities. And we're really passionate about giving practical strategies to clinicians working in the field who are working with children or adults, anything related to AAC. So you can look us up on iTunes or you can find us on Facebook. We've got a group over there or check out our website at bit.ly slash TWT podcast. Please join our community of professionals that are working to ensure that everyone can say whatever they want to say, however they want to say it. The views and opinions expressed during this show do not necessarily reflect the the policy policy or position of any affiliated workplace or employer. The views and opinions of the show do not constitute recommendations for therapy. Please Please contact contact a licensed SLP for individual consult on your situation. Please listen carefully. What is communication? An essential behavior of life. We have the both blessing and responsibility of trying to foster another. It's transmitting a thought from one person to another. It's the strongest way for two people to convey information to each other. The back and forth between two people. Communication is a lifeline. It's just connection with other people. Connecting people in terms of ideas or thoughts or needs. Draws us out of ourselves, draws us into that relationship, you know, builds up our families. Without it, we'd be lost. Whatever it is that we do to express intent and a achieve an impact. Communication is the ability to express your needs, wants, frustrations, and desires to anyone that you feel needs to have that information. Welcome back to Speech Science, but I'm Matt Hot, a school-based speech and language pathologist working with middle school students and also a home health care SLP uh, working uh, with stroke and dementia rehab. Joined, as always, by Michelle Wintering, her her focus as an SLP is in pediatrics. What's up, Michelle? Hi, Matt. And Michael McLeod, the dude from Philadelphia. He's also a private practice owner focusing in executive functioning. Mike, what's up? What's up, dude? And our special guest this week, we have brought her back. She's the PTS, PTSD SLP. If I could say all those letters, that'd be awesome. Uh, also a high school SLP down in Florida. It's Rachel Arshambo. Arshambo, I said it. Did I say it right? Picked up. Yes, I you did. Thumbs up. Awesome. Rachel, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you all for having me. Uh, we are glad you are here. In today's episode, we're excited because we're going to be talking about some things happen politically that may or may not be affecting our students uh, in December and January. We're also going to be talking about uh, the great debate on data tracking, digital, in person. Do you do it? Maybe just don't do it. Count on your fingers. And our special guest, special guest Rachel Arshambo. Yes, good job. <laughs> I was so worried about saying it right that I started to goof up the introduction. It's so okay. Arshambo. Well, it's, <laughs> last yes. names, I always goof up because like, and I hate this because I teach my like social skills groups that like your name is one of the most important things that you can have. And it doesn't matter if your name is Matt and you go by Jimmy. If you go by Jimmy, everyone needs to call you Jimmy. Mm-hmm. And like, that is like the one time that you can steal power from everybody and say, this is my name. And then I go off and screw up saying everybody's name. And I'm like, I am trying to give you power. <laughs> I am so sorry. No, you got it. I had a, I had right. a boss at oh, a job sorry. that uh, I was not at very long and she had a tendency to give people a different name or say their name differently because she liked Mm -hmm. it better that way. And it just, uh, one of many reasons why I didn't stay there long (laughs) because the name is so important. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree with you, Michelle. (laughs) Michelle. (laughs) Oh, all right. So our topic coming back from break, this was sent in from a re from a listener, right? Mike, it said, talk about data tracking and the great debate between paper or digital or even if we collect data, how often are you collecting data? Rachel, you're a school-based SLP, so you're in the same room that I am, that our IEPs are all data-driven, mm-hmm. and we can get lost in the, the field. Michelle, over in pediatrics world, I'm assuming that data drives everything, and of course, Mike, in private practice, that does as well. What do you guys do for data? How often are you collecting it? 
do you collect it? What what is up with all of it? Hate da- hate data. <laughs> <laughs> hate data. Data sucks. I love uh, data. I hate collecting it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. I'm with Rachel there. Yes. I much, don't hate m- much better said than what I said. Yes. I I really <laughs> like having the data and having that comparison. Um, but I am not the person who is taking data the entire session or, mm-hmm. or like we did in grad school when they were peering yes. over our shoulders. Yeah. Um, I'm more of- the- We got 103 attempts today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm more of the touch point data. Like in this moment, can you carry mm-hmm. over that skill or are for doing articulation, doing a session where we pull out a clicker because sometimes kids love clickers and like getting a number as mm-hmm. a reference point and rechecking it in a week or two to see if we can beat that number. Um, but uh, doing the very strict data is- is not necessarily my style, but it's so dependent on the goal. Exactly. And Mm -hmm. how you write your goals. And sometimes how your supervisors or your clinics, clinic um, billing or charting system allows you to input goals. So it can be frustrating because sometimes I know I've worked different places using different platforms. And if I'm, I'm a person who I will go back to the, the woman we quote with the Willow quote, Uh, Matt and my professor, Janet Wright from um, Ohio University, and uh, she said, and it always stuck with me, that you should be able to do therapy with paper and pencil. And to me, that doesn't mean writing down every data point or checkpoint um, as you're doing therapy to keep the data, but um, being able to be creative and, and do therapy without a lot of stuff. And to me, that means doing a little more of the touch point data too. So for something like apraxia, obviously it's like crucial. You have to mm-hmm. have the repetitions, you have to have the data, mm-hmm. but for something like executive functioning, you really don't get that data. And same thing with like life skills and those sorts of things. And a lot, I've, one thing I've realized is parents really get kind of uh, hyper-focused on labels and diagnoses. Like in the area I live in, parents will pay thousands and thousands of dollars just to confirm a diagnosis right when everything is pointing to the fact that the kid has the diagnosis or doesn't have the diagnosis uh so we get so caught up in these labels and these uh diagnostics when it really is about the individual and especially so many of these disorders are on a spectrum uh so it's really not the most important thing and money could be spent in in better areas but data is something that's also a little bit too focused on. And I see it all the time in executive functioning. And there's a reason why there's no standardized testing for executive functioning. And there, there never will be. You can't truly measure it. It's like measuring the imagination. You can't, you can't do that. You can't measure visual imagery of the brain. Uh, so that's why you have like the brief checklist and you have observations and analyzing writing samples, those sorts of things. Uh, so it really, so Michelle made a great point. It's really about exactly what you're treating, what the goals are. If it's our tick, if it's apraxia, you're going to want to get that. But if it's something like social skills in a social group, you know, sitting there and just, you know, you can take notes, but concrete data, I wish there was a more, um, I wish IEPs didn't force SLPs to take such consistent data. It would be yeah. great. It'd be so, great if data was more of like a once a week, once a month thing. I'll disagree with that. All right. And, and I'll say that it's because my current school district is teaching me that I've written IEP so poorly in the past. And I, if you would have put, made me put my hand on a Bible two years ago and asked me if I felt like I wrote good IEP goals, I would have swore up and down that I wrote great IEP goals. And we're going through a training now with the school district and my building supervisor, Ashley, is working with me to try to figure out how to write better data collection goals and make your life easier, hopefully, (laughs) and make my life easier. So for example, one of the ways that we have always been trained is so-and-so is going to do X, Y, Z at 85% across three consecutive sessions. But we're always like, okay, when do we get to that three consecutive sessions? And now what I'm starting to do is I'm starting to write, We'll take, you know, we'll do it at 85% across three consecutive data collection sessions. Okay. And then that way, when I put into my like progress monitoring statement in the plop, I can say progress will be monitored every two to three weeks. 
So then I'm still covered by the quarter. The quarter's nine weeks, three consecutive data collection sessions separated by two to three weeks. I'm taking data on a student every second or third time I'm seeing them. I'm still meeting my IEP goal, which then gives me two or th two weeks or a week or two weeks to teach the skill. And then I can test it on that third week. What I said, and you disagreed <laughs> and, you, and you disagreed. Well, I, I was disagreeing with the part where you said that the IEPs force us to, to collect so much. Yeah, like, that's what old, I'm trying to tell based you. Based on the old goals <laughs> that you were writing. Mike, did I mention I... What was that? We lost you. Oh, no. Is your mic out, Matt? <laughs> the mic came back. It's all good. Mike, did I mention I had COVID? <laughs> I did. You did. Playing the sympathy. Okay, so maybe I agreed with you 100% and I just misunderstood the last part. I apologize. Oh, man. Well, I killed the show. Congratulations, everybody. No, you're good. No, I... <laughs> data is important. Let's summarize. Data is important. You've got to adapt it to the goals. And we all need to get better at writing our goals to make coll data collection easier and actually show growth. So how are but you guys... don't drive yourself crazy taking data. That's the Paper number one pencil? thing. Always focus on yes. therapy and relationships more than data, period. Are you guys doing paper and pencil then? I use a sticky note and I put it, like I will take it and put it into my kid's file. Like, Ooh, yeah. Nice. So I don't, I do mostly everything digitally. Um, and during virtual learning, I still used like post-its. Um, I'm a big post-it person, as you can see there. I love post-its. Um, but it's, it's <laughs> handy because my first year at school, um, a parent had never contacted me and decided to file due process. And I was mm -hmm. like, I've never heard from this parent. Like, they just want my data. Like, here, I've got all of it. So that took care of it. I just was like, I have everything you need. You could just talk to me about it. But um, mm -hmm. having those post-its, I think, is like a safety thing for me that I'm like, this is everything they have. But then we have progress notes. We have um, our IEP system. We we put everything in there digitally. So I'm, I'm sure people could do it digitally, but it's just easier for me to do post it and then say like student was achieving 80%. Mm -hmm. here. I, uh, when I was in the schools, um, use post-its all the time, but uh, my second, second or third year, I can't remember. I just did a really simple chart, like just on word document. It wasn't mm -hmm. anything fancy. And I would have the students names listed. It was my quick reference because you're seeing kids back to back or in groups. Right. And then I had their goals for that kid, just a quick line of what that goal was. And I would put a check mark if we worked on a goal. And then I could see, okay, I've seen this kid five times. I haven't taken data. So I need to take some data again. And that way I could have a quick, a quick reference for it because we still had the system. We had to put their, you know, their progress right. notes and, and status and attendance into um, and then in the clinics, because it's more turnover, you know, in a school disc system, you often have a kid the entire year, if not mm -hmm. for four or five years. And in a clinic, it's more short term or maybe for six months or three months, whatever that plan of care is for. And so, um, so I would do my quick reference, but it needed to change. So it was a, a little different format. I moved over to the SLP toolkit, uh, like a month before the pandemic. Hit. Yeah. How's that working? Yeah. I love it. A lot of okay. People so do. yeah, I put my goals in and what I like the best part about it is the laziness factor. So once you put your goal in, you can print out a data collection sheet. Mm -hmm. So then you can have that like in their working file. So now you've got the paper and pencil copy of it and you can go over to your computer and then type it in or you can just have your laptop open and that's kind of what I've been doing. I have my Google Chromebook open and we'll, I'll just collect data kind of as I'm going digitally. Pretty awesome. Michelle, you look like you're about to ask a question. I she's lost look, it. She's looking it up. <laughs> okay. I lost it. I feel like no, you I guys really... talk about the COVID piece and I, I still to this day, I don't know if some of my memory pauses and lapses <laughs> are pregnancy and like, having a child or, or if it's brain. because I also had COVID in July. So I, well, <laughs> so here's what I also say, like having a digital data tracking software system, I'm really liking the, 
it's forcing me to realize how much extra data that I'm collecting. And I kind of going back to what we were just talking about, because where it's like, for some of my new IEPs that I've inherited, it's like the last three sessions. And I'm like, well, then why do I have eight or 10 weeks of data collection that doesn't matter? Yeah. Like, so it's forcing me to look that way, but I do like the, the easy. I definitely stuff stopped stuff. a long, long time ago writing anything with three consecutive sections. Cause that's just, no. <laughs> I, was, I like that. I still no, like not, that. I take it, take out the word consecutive and I like it better because I, I'm All talking right, about me meeting a goal, so <sighs> I'm gonna argue with you for yeah, a second. go for it because I'm I'm gonna right. argue back. So all right, I've got a kid. Yeah, where he's gonna do medial R O R. Mm -hmm. We'll just make it medial O R, and he's gonna do it through. I'm gonna say three consecutive sessions to show that he's being consistent. Okay, and in my way, he's got to do it three weeks in a row, and he did it. In your way, he could do it in January once. He could do it in March once and once in October. Well, are you in a school or in a clinic? And how long is your plan of care? I'm in a school and my yeah. plan of care is the IEP. It's one year. Okay. So for a year, but that- <laughs> I don't like where this is going, okay, guys. So I'm going to argue back with you. Rachel, defend <laughs> no, me. You're in a school. No, <laughs> I want to see what Michelle's going to do. <laughs> um, so I would say, based on you being in a school- that that is really good diagnostic information that they can do that mm -hmm. across you're saying the entire school year but okay what it what is different in your session or your setting when they're able to do it and when they're not um, so i would mark that as like they can do this skill they can do it across multiple months um but why aren't we seeing the consistency so now you need to change your goal for Okay, consistency across settings. Is it just three consecutive sessions? And, and how really frequent you are your sessions? Are you talking, are you seeing this kid three times a week? Are you seeing this kid once a week, once a month? I don't know. This is a made up student. So before. I'm just saying consecutive can be. Who works on medial R? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. Ooh. But, um, but anyways, I, I don't like the word consecutive because I think you get more information in some ways it might be more of a carryover skill if say they missed a session and mm, I gotcha. Um, and now you saw that skill still carried over two weeks later. Fair point. We want to hear from you. <laughs> we want to hear from you. Head over to our website, speech science podcast.com email is speech science podcast at gmail.com or phone calls or text messages. 614-681-1798 rapid fire news headlines for y'all did you guys see this this is coming across more and more uh newspapers and and news headlines and we've talked about it a little briefly already but uh special needs students and their families are starting to raise lawsuits against school districts for not returning to the classroom and following their classroom rules that they need for their students been, we haven't been seen happening. that so much in here but have you guys seen that out in your y'all way? Not yet, but I expect that to happen. Um, I don't know. I it's yeah. it's a tough time. <laughs> I I understand parents feeling that their students are not getting what they deserve, but I also think the typical students are not getting what they deserve. You know, during this time, yeah. so it, it's not it's it's equal in a way that they're both not getting, getting right getting so it's subpar, yeah. right and and if anything i know my district has more ese students that came back um they our district sent a letter to students that were underperforming and for my ese students a lot of them are underperforming um so a lot of them are back on campus so it, it's it's a tough time. I don't know how these lawsuits will go, but I expect in the next six months to be, there will be a lot of them in my area. Nice. Michelle, Mike, anything? Uh, yeah. I, I feel like it's been happening ever since school shut down to begin with. Uh, right. So I, it's only going to continue. It's a rise. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, the second after the second story says afternoon napping is tied to better cognition in the elderly. So for those of us that are working with adults, it is a good thing to get our brains well rested. I always tell my patients that we need our brain is so impacted by uh, 
hunger, thirst, uh, fatigue, stress, that if we can get our adult patients to understand a afternoon nap is not the sign of old age, but just the sign that our brain needs to rest and repair and recycle. Well, my toddler a good thing. and most preschoolers work better with an afternoon nap. So we all do. I work better with a nap. Yeah. Right. <laughs> there you go. So I don't see why that wouldn't be the case later. And our, our last headline is from Dartmouth, Massachusetts, but I chose it specifically because I knew Rachel would be joining us on the show. Uh, a high school in Dartmouth is following a national trend to ensure a therapy dog is on campus for their students. And it talks about how therapy dogs can relieve stress, uh, increase uh, student uh, initiative, et cetera. And Rachel, I know you had or have a, a therapy dog, right? I still have him. He's here. <laughs> He's just been napping. No, I'm a hundred percent in favor that all sh- all schools should have therapy dogs. All public places, therapy dogs. All therapy dogs, all the time. That is your 2022 <laughs> political stance. That's how That's, that is That's my that. campaign. Therapy That's dogs for all. <laughs> Rachel for president of ASHA. Therapy dogs <laughs> mandatory. Do you know how much? going back to social media so many people would be mad at you oh my gosh it'd be pretty i bet it'd be pretty 50 50 split of people that's yes. what i mean like there'd be so many people Love what do you mean idea. i gotta go back to school to become a therapy <laughs> dog handler i don't wow i came into this field to do r and r only and i'm not yeah what doing SLPD, AAC. You know. i would love it i worked with an slp in my very first year who looked at me when i was like hey i need to get like a communication device and they were like yeah, I don't do that. That's why that kid doesn't have any devices. That's more, that's like, common, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, uh, good point. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Our last part it's always very easy to blame Asha for everything negative that they do or to say what they're not looking out for us. But we tried to spot, shine a good spotlight on the things that Asha is doing. And it looks like what they are trying to do is the ASHA Schools Connect the, is now going to be an online conference from July 14th through the 26th. And there is a call for posters uh, that is due by February 17th, 2021. So you got less than 16 days uh, to submit for the ASHA Schools Connect posters and early bird registration runs till April 12th. And full disclosure, we get no money from ASHA. It's just that we like kind of promoting what we're paying for so i someone reached out and was like do you guys get advertising dollars for doing this and we're like no we just kind of like to say why we spend three hundred dollars a year for an extra license that most places don't care about i mean asha if you want to you know throw something our way let us know i don't think they will they've got their own podcast i'm just saying that's true Get this though. Okay, so early bird. If you are an ASHA member, the early bird for the ASHA Schools Connect is two fifty, but if you wait till after, uh, it's three fifty. Yeah. So, so go early. Have you all ever been to the Schools Connect? I was no. supposed to go last year. Nope. I think I did it one time. I can't remember. Was it worth it? I don't remember it at all. Maybe I didn't <laughs> go. I don't know. I, oh, it sounds it sounds familiar. That is a great endorsement. I have no idea. I should look it up. Did you go? Maybe. Uh, I don't remember any of it. it sounds so I familiar. Thought about going once. Oh, I don't know. Man. Maybe. All right, y'all. The fun is over. I love hanging out with you guys. So let's do this again next week. Rachel, you are more than welcome to join us anytime you would like. Okay. But Rachel, you are our guest. So please tell us something cool, fun, and or exciting that you are doing in the next week that is not therapy related? Good question. I will say I will start a new show on Netflix and Ooh. I would like to start walking like five miles that like a day. A I, week? I, oh. No, in a, in a day. I'd like to do, or let's start with the weekends. I would like to do like Saturday or Sunday, one five mile consistent walk. Nice. Okay. Nice. What book are you currently reading? Because I feel like you've got a good book list. I'm I'm actually doing Brave New World right now because um, hey. I've I've never done that and I love the dystopian stuff. I'm I'm doing audiobooks because my drive is like 40 minutes um, and I'm I go through a lot of books that way. So Brave New World, I'm halfway through right now. Um, 
and I, I also recommend Howard Stern's book. Okay. <laughs> I have to, I have to throw in for you, Rachel, because you're reading Brave New World. For those of you who haven't read it in high school, or that's mm-hmm. when I read it. My amazing English teacher in high school, I will shout out to Mr. D- Debo, Mr. Dvorak. Um, he did for our final exam for that book, mm-hmm. the first, qu- it was a choose your own adventure exam. And the first oh, question, that's really cool. it was amazing. The first question was, would you live in the brave new world or not? Ooh. And so based on that, you had certain perks or not like throughout the test, you could work like with a partner or you could do whatever. The only rule was that you couldn't choose not to take the test in the free will land (laughs) because apparently that happened the first time he gave it i mean that would be very smart of that kid to do that and i think he must have given them an a yep Um, i i think i would choose to live in the the new world i I think i read that book the book is from 1931 yeah i should read it matt it's it's really good i did the i did the i was going to call it net sparks i did the spark notes Mm -hmm. of that Mm -hmm. when i was in high school so I don't remember anything about that book. Okay. <laughs> yeah, way to cheat, Matt. <laughs> Man, y'all, like, okay, so in college, I read Lord of the Flies mm-hmm. because I did spark notes on it in high school, and I realized it was a really good book. So I, I had that same, same thing. I had that same thing working with high school kids now that I, I've read uh, Of Mice and Men, which I hated in high school, hated it. And I actually really enjoy it and understand it. Yeah, I I do really like it now. We read uh, Things Fall Apart by Chinu Akabi. And basically it's the story of a, and I'm going to get it so bad. So maybe I should actually look up the story. (laughs) I've been doing a book club with my best guy friends. Some of them I've known since elementary school, some from middle school, high school, college, like we're, it's, it's funny because it's just like a funny group of people. And we're taking these books like really seriously. The first one was like kind of romance. And I was like, oh, this is so (laughs) cute to be talking about this with you guys. And uh, it's cool that we get together on Zoom and talk about it like a high school group, you know, it's, it's awesome. Things fall apart. It's the story, and I was right. Okay, I want to make sure I got it right. It's the story of pre-colonial life in the southeastern part of Nigeria. It's about this guy's life and how, like, more like the more things that happen to him, the more it starts to fall apart, and he loses control of it. So that sounds cool. It's actually really interesting. Yeah, I've got like five new books on my book list. (laughs) Thanks, guys. Let me know if you want to talk about them, Michelle, because I love, I I remember those books very, very well. Mike, what are you doing in the next week or so that is not therapy related? Getting my vaccine. Yay! Period. Yay! Yay. That's all I'm thinking about is getting that and moving on. You might have a rough day the, the first night of it. I had a really rough time, worse than the first one, but good luck to you. I'm ready for it. Whatever it takes. Same. Me too. Yeah. Please don't laugh at me. Michelle, did I ask you what you're doing for No, you did not yet. therapy? Re- okay, good. I had a moment there when, oh my God, did I just blank <laughs> no, out? Like, guys, hosting all... a podcast is really difficult right it's now. It's all good. Michelle, what are you doing this I am Probably keeping a tiny human alive. <laughs> Yay! Keeping tiny humans alive is wonderful. <laughs> but really, hopefully just getting a chance to do some more neighborhood walks, as Mike talked about. There you go. I'm telling you, the uh, neighborhood me, walks, man. Get on that, Matt. Man, I need to. I've got, I signed up for the Disney digital run oh, nice. thinking I wouldn't have COVID, but now I'm like, I don't know if I can do that. It's so. hard. Get walking, dude. Uh, I think the only thing that I'm doing this next week that I'm actually looking forward to is I'm going to help my kids. So uh, last week I built a, we had a trundle bed underneath their bunk beds and I turned it into a slot car track so that they can pull it out from under the track and pull it back or pull it out from under the bed, race it and push it back under. So we're going to work on some decorations for it this week. So you posted a picture of that. That was really cool. That was awesome. That was very, very well done. (laughs) Well, so like, I think everyone thinks I built the trundle bed and I just, 
got the plywood and stapled some grass to it and then built track on top of it. Still so, awesome. The trundle Still. bed was already there. I don't but... care. That's awesome. <laughs> Going above and beyond. That's like that. that's like dad Pinterest right there. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> that that's what I am known for in my Facebook world is the dad the Pinterest dad. <laughs> Guys, so I can't even. No. All right. Our opening music is uh, Please Listen Carefully by Jazar's License Under an Attribution and Share a Like License. Our bump music is the County Fair Rock, copyright of John Deku. His wife is an SLP. You can find his music over at soundcloud.com slash Dirk Dog Music. The Informed SLP, their music was At The Count by Broke For Free. It's licensed under a Creative Commons and Attribution License. And our closing music, which is playing right now, it's Slow Burn by Kevin McLeod. It's licensed under, also under a Creative Commons attribution license. In the immortal words of Janice Wright, always be a willow, never be an oak. The oak looks strong, but in a storm, it will crack. The willow will bend and return to form. For fellow willows, Michelle Wintering, Michael McLeod, Rachel Ar Archambo, said it. I'm Matt Hot. Until next week, so long, everybody. It's like a two hour, like, mega episode. Oh my God, dude. Science is edited and produced by MWH Production. Please follow Speech Science on Twitter at Speech Science PC and like our page on Facebook. For more original podcasts, please visit exceptionaled.com and rate and subscribe to our podcasts anywhere you get your podcasts.